I'm Phil, and today I'm going to have a look at the latest GPS module from M5 Stack. So we'll just have a look at uh, what it is. And um, you can see from these photos that it's a module that fits uh, in the um, stack of M5. So M5 computer, like a core computer, will go on top of this. And it comes with an external antenna. And it will work with any of the core computers. I'm going to use it in a project with the original core. and But it will also work with Core 2 and Core S3. And what's really interesting about this is that the original GPS uh, modules um, only really supported a couple of satellite systems. But here, you can actually see that it supports quite a number. And we'll see that in the specifications in a minute. But if you do want to configure it for one of the core computers, you do have to toggle the uh, switches uh, on the um, module itself. So cost-wise, uh, the um, introductory price is $13.95. And for applications, you can use it um, for in-vehicle GPS, positioning and navigation. Not quite as small as this one, and also uh, not as robust. So it's not packaged to be um, to work reliably in all sorts of weather. You'd have to do a lot more work to make this um, waterproof. You could use it for um, IoT position devices and for geographical information systems, particularly where you want high precision, because you're getting now an improvement in the accuracy and the precision of the um, location measurements. So if you um, want to also explore the different uh, systems, how many satellites you get from each, and also their precision, compare it with um, Google Maps, it's a um, another application you can have a look at. So um, what are the systems? Well, GPS, the uh, Japanese system, the Chinese system, uh, Galileo and Glasnost. And um, so you've got multi-frequency and uh, multi-system reception. And it supports platforms either on the uh, UI flow, or you can do the program in Arduino IDE. So uh, if we look at the specs in a little bit more detail, uh, here we've got the block diagram of the basic system. And it um, has a CPU, but a lot more than that, it's a whole system on a chip. And it supports the... Um, the various satellite systems. So you can see that um, as it's uh, connected to the CPU. Uh, it has a um, amplifier for the signal, satellite si signals coming in. And uh, all of this, of course, is included in the package already pre-assembled. And we've seen the different systems and the frequencies which are supported and channel-wise, we have um, 50, up to 50 channels. And position accuracy, it can be less than 1.5, uh, particularly if you're combining uh, the reception from more than one satellite system. And you get an update every uh, 10 hertz. And um, we'll be uh, looking at the sensitivity, much the same as the original, but it's a bit quicker in starting. So the startup time is um, fairly quick compared to it was. Not a lot uh, of difference, but just a little bit quicker. And um, for the uh, power consumption, you can uh, put it to sleep, uh, but you do go up to um, 42 milliamps when you're uh, using it. Okay, so what do those uh, switches look like? Well, um, We'll have a look at that the way I've set it up uh, when I go. But uh, one thing you have to be careful of is the pin map. Depending on the core 
computer that you've got, um, what, whatever you've selected. And as an example, um, you have to set the um, dip switches for the transmission, reception, and for the um, PPS. So I'm going to set it up for core, the basic core computer. Uh, Software-wise, we might have a look to see what um, is supported. There's support for the Arduino. There's a library and a tutorial. Looks fairly good, but I haven't gone through that yet. But I've done a couple of projects, and uh, we'll have a look at um, my latest project. So we might increase the resolution so you can see that. So um, while um, I set it up on the desktop, this is my photo taken just outside my house. And um, what it tells you is the number of satellites on top, the quality of the signal, the longitude, latitude and altitude. And it gives you the time information and the date. And the three buttons on the bottom, buttons A, B and C, gradually increase the number of satellite systems. So if you only press button A, you'll get GPS. If you press button B, you'll get um, GPS plus Glasnost. And if you press button C, you'll get all three. And the B stands for the Chinese BD system. So my objectives are to test the module, module two, and to have a look at um, the not only the GPS coordinates, but also time and date. And I want to be able to select the uh, GNSS system uh, by pressing button A, B, or C. So they're my uh, objectives. Hardware-wise, everything comes from M5 stack. My computer is going to be a core computer, and the module is the um, GPS version 2. And this is the uh, arrangement of the um, pins. So you can see that I've selected the core unit. And software-wise, we might go across and have a look at that in a minute. But um, here's my user interface. And everything is uh, constructed on the online IDE called UI Flow 2. And I set the resources. So it, once you set it for GPS version 2, it will um, provide the additional commands for your program. And code-wise, well, here's my code. And we might go across and have a look at that now. So to access the um, UI flow, go back, go to the um, uh, gateway website at M5 Stack, select software, and you get a choice. And uh, we then select the uh, get started for free. And uh, then we select the UI flow to software. And uh, we're ready to go. And um, what you can do with this is, uh, at the moment, it's configured already for a, um, a core computer. Um, but what I'm going to do is add the module. If you go down uh, to uh, all the different modules, I'm going to select GPS version 2. And when I do that, all the additional commands are available. And it um, allows me to initialize it. So, all I do is initialize the GPS and it will set up the um, GPIO pins for transmission, receive and PPS. PPS is the um, uh, pulse per second for precise synchronization. And uh, that gets us started. And if we keep on going, we can paint the screen. So if we... Um, uh, go across and draw we get a screen like this we can give it a title and we can give it various labels by just dragging those across and we'll be using those in our program so i've already uh, configured this so we'll go to my program and here it is i've uh, already painted in the uh, labels the the, uh, the title of the program 
and also which satellite system. So that appears on the top line. Uh, the number of satellites, the position quality, longitude, latitude, and altitude, and the time, uh, together with the push buttons. And here's the program for doing that. So we'll just walk through that. Just increase the size. And in setup, I've set up the um, GPS version 2. Then I've added two more uh, commands. The first one selects, by default, the GPS, BDS, and Glasnost. And uh, you can change that. Um, there are the various uh, alternatives that are available. Unfortunately, we don't have the European system. Galileo, it's not included in the um, UI flow version. And I set my time offset. And after that, um, I'm going to go through the loop by picking up and setting my variables and then just simply um, uh, tracking those variables on my LCD screen. And I can change buttons A, B, and C to the various combination of GPS systems. And that's the software. So overall, I was able to get it to work. And you can see a demonstration outside uh, after I complete the uh, mind map. So the results, I was able to um, achieve grabbing all the GPS coordinates and showing those. And I included both time and date. And I could also select the combination of GNSS or satellite systems. So um, quite happy with the results. Uh, and I'm ready to move on to future projects. And these uh, could in, include comparing the different satellite systems and their performance. And uh, this will be quite easy. All you have to do is um, stay in the same location uh, and then select the different systems. And you might have to actually uh, do this in the Arduino system uh, because um, the Galileo is not supported in UI flow. Another project is to uh, track location and say air quality. You might want to do uh, PM 2.5 or the other environmental parameters and um, log where you are with the measurement, the environmental measurement that you're taking. You could use it to track an elderly or disabled person, and that would require additional comms and a battery. But also you'd have to put that in a package which is waterproof. Uh, one project that I've got in mind is to map urban heat island and uh, using a um, thermal camera, you could then record where you take your picture and you could use that um, as a study of the um, heat that we've um, created in our cities. could also be used as an aid in agriculture. So uh, plenty of future projects. And um, I think one of the most interesting is comparing and exploring the different GPS systems. So uh, here are my references and um, plenty about uh, satellite systems and all the competing systems that are, are available. So you can compare their performances and the expected accuracy against the accuracy that you're actually measuring yourself. And if you're interested in one of the applications that are used in uh, tracking elderly people, here's an, an example of a commercial system which is already available uh, for tracking cars, people. And here's one just for tracking the elderly. And that comes with a subscription service. But if you're interested in the um, M5 stack the component, the GPS module, go across to the shop and we'll have a look at that now. We'll go across to the website and uh, here it is on their website. So it was only released um, a couple of weeks ago, 
and it's already out of stock. Okay, so uh, that's it from me. Stay tuned to a demo outside. Here we have the GPS module on GPS only. And if we press button B, we'll bring in um, Glasnost. So we'll increase the number of satellites from nine. And we'll press button B now, and it goes up to 12. So we get extra satellites and hopefully we'll get a bit more accuracy. And if we press button C, we bring in another set of satellites uh, from China, the BD system. So we'll press that and we go from 12 up to 20. So we now have 20 satellites contributing to our measurements.